Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably an older person like me who started doing home recordings off a little tape recorder when you're younger. And then somewhere in the mid to late 1980s, you bought a Porta Studio four track recorder like this, Tascam 246. And from there, you might have graduated to a, a 16 track digital recorder like this Korg 1600 that uh, we see here. And then somewhere in the early 2000s or so, you moved up to a Pro Tool setup and your Porta Studio just sat there. Now, my concern was that over time, the Porta Studio tapes that I had would begin to deteriorate and I would lose them forever. So I wanted to move them to my Pro Tools setup. And uh, when I first turned on my Porta Studio, I found that it still worked. But the problem was that the rubber components, the belts and the pinch rollers and things like that had deteriorated to such an extent that it, it could not handle the tapes anymore. So though my tapes were okay and the electronics of the Porter Studio were doing well, the uh, tape section was just deteriorated. So what I had to do was to actually go through and change the belts and the pinch rollers. And I was able to get all of those things on eBay actually and I was able to make that change. So if ever you, you run into that same problem and you want to see how I change the belts and things like that, just send me a comment and I'll try to do a video for that on you. But it was, it was not uh, that difficult. So now my Tascam Porta Studio was up and rolling and I just wanted to move the tapes over. If you're like me, you probably have a box of Porta Studio cassette tapes that have been sitting in that box for, you know, over 30 years. And uh, now's the opportunity to move them to Pro Tools before they disappear. So I'm just going to grab one of them and show you how I went about doing it. The first thing I'm going to suggest is to build a Pro Tools template for all of these Porta Studio conversions. So we'll go to File, New Session. We'll say Create a Blank Session and click OK. We'll call it a tutorial. And then we're set to go. I'm going to get rid of this uh, click track. And what I'm going to do is to create a couple new tracks. So I'm going to create four mono audio tracks. I'm going to create one stereo aux track. And I'm going to create one stereo master fader. Okay, and there we go. Now, just to make this easier to read, I'm going to color these a little bit. So we'll take the one and three. And the color we'll select for that is this one. And then we'll do number two and number four. Give it this color. Um, the aux track will make this color and the master fader we will do this okay so now it's uh, easier to see the different tracks and now we're going to link these together now my particular audio interface does have eight inputs uh, so we're just going to use four so you can see the first track is coming from input one second is input two third is input three and the fourth is input four. Now, if for some reason your audio interface only has two inputs, then you're gonna do the process twice, but you're gonna make uh, track three and four, again, input number one and two. So you'll do the first two tracks here, and then you'll do the three and four here uh, through the uh, inputs for your input one and two. Now let's rename the tracks. Um, we'll call the first one track one. Uh, second one, we'll call track two. Uh, third one, track three. Fourth one will be track four. Okay, now we created an aux track to feed all these tracks into in case we want to manipulate them later with some EQ or if we want to do anything with compression, anything like that. So we're going to 
uh, call this. Uh, we'll look at a bus. We can choose any one, but for now we'll just do a uh, dry mix. Okay, so now we're going to funnel each one of these tracks into the dry mix. So we're going to make sure they're all selected. And we'll pick um, dry mix. So now they're all, all four tracks are going to the dry mix out to the main and we'll make this main as well. Okay, now at this point, we're all set to go with our template and we'll use this for all of our Porta Studio cassettes. And so at this point, we'll hit File, Save as Template, and name it. And in my case, it'll be called Porta Studio Template. And then we're ready to go. Now, if you turn your Porta Studio around, you'll see a lot of inputs and outputs on the back. But the one you want to look for is the four that say tape out. These are a direct feed from whatever ever is on your cassette tape. So track one on your cassette tape comes out of that tape out one. And track two, three, and four come out of those tape outs that you see there. Now, they don't go through the internal mixer. They are directly what you're hearing on the cassette tape. If you wanted to manipulate the signal, then you would come out of the program outs and you would set your setup in the remix position so that the signal from the tape comes out the program out. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted the finished tapes to sound just like they are already done through my Pro, Pro Tools system. So I needed to come directly from the tape outs. Now, if you notice, these connections on the back are RCA plugs. So what I had to do was uh, go on Amazon and get these uh, cables that have an RCA plug on one end and they have quarter inch TS cables on the other end. And at that point, I would take the tape one out and plug the RCA plug right there into tape one out. And then I would take the TS quarter inch cable and run the tape out from the Port Studio into the input of my Sapphire Pro 40. So when you get finished, you have the tape outs for tracks one, two, three, and four with RCA plugs going out of the Porta Studio into tracks one, two, three, and four of your audio interface. The tape out one is going into my input one. Tape out two is going to my input two. And then on the back, tape out three is going into line three. Tape out four is going to line four. get started on the uh, first Pro, uh, Porta Studio tape, uh, we're going to open up a new session. So the file, new session, and we're going to say create the session from template. And I'm going to choose my Porta Studio template, which is right there, and say OK. And I'll call it Porta Studio Tutorial, and we'll hit save. OK, so there's our template. So your Porta Studio first track is going to go in input one on your interface. Uh, two here, three, and four. Okay, so now we're all set to go, and let's do some gain staging. Now remember, when you start this process, nothing on the mixer side has to be set to anything. You'll notice that all my settings are down to zero, because nothing is really being fed through the Porta Studio here. We're just coming from the tape going right to the tape outs, and those are going right into my Pro Tools system. Now what you want to do is find the first song you want to do on your Porta Studio tape, and get to where you want and reset the counter back to zero. That way if you have to do the tracks separately, you can always make sure each track is starting from the 
exact same start point. Now, we have a line level signal going in. So I've kept all of my insert or input switches just at mid-level, and it doesn't matter. You, you could turn them down for now when you get started because you don't know how loud your tapes are going to be. So I'm just going to just keep my all about the same, about a three, just to make sure nothing comes through too loud. Now what I've done here is I've set all of my Pro Tools inputs uh, so that they are in record mode. And I'm going to start play on my Porta Studio. And what I'm going to do is adjust each input level on my Sapphire, my audio interface, to bring the line up to about 10, just so that all the signals are equal. We can mix them later, but at this point, I'm just going to make sure all of the levels are even and we have enough headroom to mix later. So I'm going to press play and we'll watch the monitor. Now we already see on track two, we're getting a signal. So I'm going to move it, my input level, just so that track two is hitting around the 10 mark. And then I'm going to go to my track one and I'm going to raise that up so it's about equivalent and doesn't clip. That looks about right. I'm going to go to track three and do the same thing. So they're So when it's playing, all the lines are very similar. Nothing's clipping, and I've got some headroom. I'm going to move back on track one a little. It's a little bit loud. Now what we're going to do is solo each track to find out what's on it. So we'll try track four. It's a rhythm guitar, so I'm going to type that down. It's rhythm guitar. Try track three. Sounds like a lead guitar. Gonna to go to track four. It sounds like a synthesizer. And track one. It's just some fill, guitar fill. So I'm going to stop my tape, and you can see my inputs on my Sapphire, my audio interface look good. So now we've checked all of our inputs, we're getting a clean signal that's not clipping. Everything is coming neatly through my Pro Tools system, so all I have to do now is get ready to record. Set my tape back to zero. Okay. So we've armed all of our tracks and they're ready to record. I'm going to hit record on my Pro Tools. And I'm going to push play on my Porta Studio. What's happening is each track is being recorded. Fourth track is the rhythm track. Third track is the lead. Track two is the synth. And track one has some guitar fills. And we just let it record. 
chord and we get to the end. Okay, so we've stopped our tape and now you can see the entire four tracks have been recorded from your Porta Studio. Now you can go back and mix it any way that you like, keeping in mind that the tracks originally came in at the same level, so they may not be mixed properly, but you have a nice strong signal at each track and plenty of headroom. So now you can go through and mix them the way that you'd like them to be. You can add compression or EQ to any of the tracks or through the uh, dry mix bus here and get it the way that you like. And then when you're all done, you just hit file, save as, uh, name it, uh, you know, to the name of your song, close it out, and then you're ready to start on the next tape uh, with a new template. If your audio interface only has two inputs, the way that I suggest that you do this is to add one additional audio track. So I'm going to go new and create one audio track. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to arm that track and you're going to give yourself a count in and your count in might be something like this one two three four push okay now you're going to do that before you've recorded any of your pro tools tracks and essentially what you're going to do is you're going to do this twice first you're going to take your porta studio outputs from track one and two and go to, into your two inputs one and two and you're going to hit record and you're going to listen and you're going to hear your audio track one say one, two, three, four, push. And when it says push, you want to push play on your Porta Studio. And what that will do, it will start playing your tracks one and two, and they'll be recorded in Pro Tools. Then when it's done, you hit stop. You then take your tape outputs from tracks three and four and put those into the inputs in your interface inputs one and two. You go back and you hit record. Again, you listen to one, two, three, four, push. And on push, again, you hit play on your Porta Studio. What that will do is send the signals from track three and four into your Pro Tools and they will be recorded down here. Now if you get used to that timing of one, two, three, four, push, you'll find that you'll pretty much be in perfect synchronization and you won't have to mess with it. But if you had to, you can always nudge the tracks a little bit to, to bring them into alignment. But that count in will allow you to do it. So the first pass you do tracks one and two, second pass you do tracks three and four. Make sure everything is aligned and then you save it. So that's one way to do this if your audio interface only has two inputs. Anyway, that's the process for moving your Porta Studio cassette tapes into Pro Tools. I hope you found this helpful.